superficial side of this model, you can see starting here, but coming all the way down here, a big flat muscle. We call this platysma. Platysma is a big, flat, almost like a sheet-like muscle that lays over the muscles of the neck. You see it go right over the clavicle here as well. The thing here is, though, is it covers up a lot of the muscles that are deep to that, and you can see them on this model quite nicely. I'll start with this one right here, sternocleidomastoid. Sterno, there's your sternum. Cledo, here's your clavicle. Sternocleidomastoid, all the way up to the mastoid process. In fact, you can palpate your mastoid process just posterior to your ear. It's that region of the skull there. In fact, you can see I'm pointing at external acoustic meatus, that's your ear canal. But sternocleidomastoid runs right through here. If we look a little bit posterior to that, you'll start to see the scalenes. Then we get into levator scapulae and splenius capitus. Splenius capitus runs right through here. You'll get a little bit of better view of these in one second here because I want to show you the trapezius. Trapezius is a big muscle of your upper back. There's upper trapezius. You'll see that here. There's middle trapezius right through here. And you'll start to see the lower trapezius there. If I take trapezius off on this model, what happens is you start to see some muscles that are a little bit more deep. So we have the spine of the scapula. You remember the scapula. There's that superior angle. Here's the medial border of the scapula. If this is the spine of the scapula, then this muscle right here is supraspinatus. This here is infraspinatus supraspinatus, infraspinatus. Again, you can see levator scapulae. Levator means elevator, and elevator lifts. Levator scapulae, you see this one grabbing right here on the superior angle. So you can imagine that helping to elevate or lift up your scapula. We see a little bit of a better view of splenius capitus. Splenius capitus comes from the term splenion. Splenion means bandage. Caput means head, so splenius capitus. I suppose the early anatomists thought this one looked like a bandage towards the head. And what we also see, again, because I've removed uh, trapezius there, we start to see the rhomboids. So this smaller one up here would be rhomboid minor. This larger one down here would be rhomboid major. Again, rhomboids, like in... Um, geometry or mathematics, the, the, the shape of a rhomboid, rhomboid minor, rhomboid major. A few other things I think that are worth pointing out. Uh, the shoulder right here, of course, is the deltoid. If I remove deltoid on this model, again, you'll get a really nice view of infraspinatus below the spine. But what you also start to see, which is kind of neat, is the humerus and the anterior side of the scapula. So what you can see here, right here that I'm pointing at, are actually the muscles of the biceps brachii. Remember, biceps brachii has two heads, bi meaning two, brachion meaning arm. So two almost like two muscles here, or two heads of this on the arm. Um, you can see this is running the right through the intertubricular groove, the greater tubercle, the lesser tubercle, so the intertubricular groove would be right through here. So this is the long head of the biceps brachii. The short head of the biceps brachii goes right up to this uh, coracoid process. So again, muscles of the arm there. A muscle of the chest that you see here is pectoralis major. You can see it on both sides. But again, if I take pec major off, what you can see underneath there is pectoralis minor. Pectoralis minor. And lastly, I want to point out the ribs. Again, the term for ribs is costa. So these muscles right here are intercostal muscles. 
intercostal muscles. And what we actually have here are two layers. This is a deep layer. This is superficial, deep superficial. So these would be the internal intercostals, internal intercostals. These would be the external intercostals. Thank you.